It's that time of the year when there is a fresh chill in the air with a lot of beautiful lights, tiyas and a lot of yummy mithais. Diwali is one of my most favorite festivals because it allows me to dress up, wear a lot of fancy clothes and a lot of makeup. So when the world is glowing, why should you not? For today's Diwali makeup, we'll be starting off with a Vaseline lip balm, a moisturizer, primer, foundation, loose powder, an eye primer, a kajal pencil, a gel eyeliner, an eyelash curler, a mascara, blush, a lip pencil, a lipstick and finally a lip gloss. For the eyes, I'll be using these eyeshadows as well as these eyelashes. This is the Sigma F50 brush, BND Professional No. 51 brush, Sigma Large Angle Contour F40 brush, MAC 217, Lord & Berry 815, Vega Lip Brush, Sigma Angular Brush in E65, Eyeliner BND Professional Brush in the number 33. Before you start with the makeup, make sure that you are washing your face with a face wash. Now after washing the face, the best thing to do is use a moisturizer first. Remember, skincare is most important. So take a little bit of moisturizer in the hand, massage it all over. Make sure that you give it at least 5 to 10 minutes to settle into the skin. To begin with the makeup, apply the lip balm. You can use it directly or with a cotton bud all over the lips. When we apply the lipstick later on, the lips will be extremely moist and we will not have any dry or chapped flaky lips. Move on to applying the primer. You don't need too much of the primer, you'll just need maybe one and a half pumps. This is more than sufficient for the entire face. Rub it between your middle finger and the ring finger and massage it all over the face but not as much as you would massage the moisturizer. If you massage it too much is that it starts looking very flaky and it gives the impression of dry skin. Moving on to foundation, take a little bit on your hand and along with a stippling brush, just blend it a little bit on the hand and start off by applying it on the cheeks and keep blending it in circular motion. Be gentle at the under eye portion. People tend to forget using foundation on the corners of the nose, the lips and the corners of the eyes. Make sure that you pay special attention to those areas too. Use your finger just on areas that you feel require a little bit more coverage. Fill into the hairlines too and do not forget the neck. Throughout the day you are going to be on your toes and you do not want your foundation to run at any point. Set your foundation, just take a fluffy brush, take some loose powder and just dab it all over the face. The powder sticks on to any liquid or cream foundation that you have applied and it makes it stay just the same from the beginning until the end. At any point of time, if you do sweat, just take a tissue and dab the sweat and never rub. Do not forget to apply powder below the eyes because that's the area where you generally tend to get a lot of lines and creases. If you have oily eyelids, you could even just run through a little bit of powder over it so that it sticks on. Apply the powder on the neck too. If you have under eye circles and your foundation does not cover it, I would suggest using a concealer. Choose a colour that is two shades darker than your original skin colour. Next up, we'll be moving on to the eyes. First, I'll be applying the eyeshadow primer with a brush. You could go ahead and use your ring finger in case if you do not want to use a brush. Apply the primer evenly till the brow bone. With primer, you'll need to work a little quickly because this tends to dry up. For the eyeshadow, I'll be using colours that are similar to her outfit. Apply the cranberry shade in the inner corner as well as the outer corner. Just leave a little gap in the centre because that's where we'll apply the gold. So gently apply the gold eyeshadow in the center. It really adds a pop of color in between the cranberry shades. Now when you blend all of this out, the color is going to look a little lighter. So we can add both the colors again. If you feel you want to intensify the crease line, what you could do is apply a purple shade because if you have a look at her outfit, she has shades of purple in it. You could choose colors according to your outfit. So we'll be applying a highlighter in shades like gold or silver because you just need to add a pop of color on the Bone, add it to the highest plane of the bone and just blend all the colors through. Moving on to the eyebrows, now you'll just need to fill the gaps that are visible to the naked eye. The best thing to do is use a color that is a shade of a matte brown. Take an angled brush and just start off from the inner corner and run your way through the outer. The best way to apply kajal is by making gentle stroke back and forth. This way the color payoff is very good. Now eyeliner, now again depending on your eye shape you can go thick or thin, now because Sahiba has big eyes, I am going to go a little thick and I am going to wing out the liner. Remember that any gel liner or any liner for that matter, if you are doing it in a wing shape, it's going to leave a little gap at the lower corner, make sure that you fill that. 
moving on to curling the lashes. Take all the lashes between the eyelash curler and press it gently. The best way to apply mascara is by rolling the wand on top of the lashes and then from below. Make sure that you are wiggling the wand a little bit so that all the lashes get coated well with mascara. Take a little bit of glue, apply it on the eyelash. Make sure that you've applied a bit extra just on the inner and outer corners and then just twist the lash a little bit so that it becomes similar to the shape of the eye. This glue is going to dry entirely, it's going to become a little transparent and then we could just run through a layer of the gel liner again. Now that we're done with the eyes, we'll start with the cheeks. First, we will contour the cheeks. So to contour, the best thing to do is make a fish face and take any matte eyeshadow or powder in two shades darker than your original skin tone and just apply it from the ear to the end of the eye and just keep blending so that there is no line that is strongly visible. You can make it intense as much as you want. Now, in case if you have a little blunt nose and you want to make it sharper, you can just apply the contouring powder at the edges of the nose. Now, because Sahiba already has a sharp nose, I will not be contouring her nose. Instead, because she has a wide forehead, I'll be applying a little bit of contour powder on this. So, what any dark shade does is that it will create a little bit of shadow and it will give the impression that that portion has gone smaller. I'll be using a pink shade of blush. The best way to apply it is by smiling in the mirror at yourself and applying it just on the apple of the cheeks and taking it upwards. Now because the blush that we've applied already has a sheen in it, I'm not going to apply a highlighter. But in case if you do, you can take any shimmery colour and apply it just on the cheekbones. Finally, moving on to the lips. First, I'll apply a lip liner and just shape the lips a little bit and fill the entire lip with the same lip pencil. And it acts like a base and it makes your lipstick stay longer. So just go along the natural lip line of yours. Don't forget to apply the pencil on the corners of the lips because generally a lot of us tend to forget. Since we've gone a little bright on the eyes, I'm using a very natural shade of pink very similar to her lip colour and I'll just coat it over the lip pencil that I've already applied. Final step would be to apply some lip gloss if you feel like. Just applying it on the centre of her lip. Now she has slightly thinner lips so adding a little bit of lip gloss just on the centre will give the illusion of bigger lips. In case if you have thicker lips, I would suggest skipping the lip gloss step entirely. Applying lip gloss on thick lips is going to make the lips look even thicker. And you are done.